reputation. If I were to, because I don't know many of you at all, but let's say I just started interviewing you, maybe I'd interview the people closest to you, you know, your, your friends who are here with you today, and I ask them, tell me about David, you know, if, if there's a David out there. Tell me, tell me about David, or whatever your name is. And I, and I asked your wife, David, I asked your kids, I asked your friends, I asked people who worked about you. Tell me about his relationship with God. Tell me what he's like. Tell me about, you know, who, who is this guy? Okay, think about that. If I interviewed the people close to you, what would they say? If I interviewed people in this church about you, what would they tell me? Hey, think about that. Some of the people in this church might say some very nice things about you, right? People in your Sunday school, people that have been on missions trips with you, people that, that were at the dinner table with you. Think about what they would tell me about you. What would they say? What's your reputation? And maybe Pastor John knows you, and I would ask Pastor John, well, tell, me what, tell me about this guy, what you know about him. Tell me about this woman, what you know about her. Think about the report I would get by interviewing those people. Okay, you got it got in your mind? We have an idea of what they would say. Okay, now what if, what if God would allow me right now to just leave this earth and come before his throne? and I could actually interview him and ask him about you. Father, tell me, tell me, about, t- tell me about David. What, what are your thoughts about him, his actions, his life, his, his love for you? And I just kind of took down a report. What would the two reports look like? Would this one report, would what your friends and your family and the people around say about you be much higher than what God would say? And if so, could it be that you've been more consumed about your reputation than you are about your character and who you really are before God? And you maybe purposefully, we can do this, right? Make ourselves sound better than we are to certain people and create a reputation for ourselves that may indeed be false when we stand before God. And we know it, and we know it, what God would say about us in many ways, and sure, sometimes we even deceive ourselves on that, but for the most part we know, right? And that's what he says to these people, and, and that, that, that verse is very dear to me because I now have a reputation. And I want my life to match up. I don't want, at the end, God to say, wow, that's good, ooh, Mr. Crazy Love, you, you know? <laughs> but for Jesus to confess my name and say, no, Francis, he, he, he loved me. He loved me. Father, angels, Here's Francis, he loved me. He he didn't go these other directions. He lived it out. (laughs) It's not what you would love to hear from the voice of Jesus. That's what we're after. And and so if it comes across me just going, wow, this guy doesn't even know me. He's getting in my face already. It's because I I want that for you. What a silliness. There's such a silliness to fake when something so big is on the line. Something so grand is on the line. I, I sometimes just tell people, I go, why would you fake? Think of, take it to the end. You, you know, take it to the very end. You fooled everyone. That's great. And so you die and you go to hell and you think, yeah, but everyone thinks I'm in heaven. <laughs> That's your goal? How long is that joy gonna last? You guys, it's this, it's, 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 it's this time to get real. It's, it's just a time for us. We gotta get honest with some of our disbelief. Uh, be honest with our fear of surrender. To be honest with some of the concern we have of the incongruency of what we see in New Testament, Testament Christianity and what we see in our own lives. <laughs> 